so that we may be sinless in the sight of God. I thank God for his son. We thank God for his grace and his mercy. I thank God for this Advent season that we're in. Uh, this past Sunday was the first Advent Sunday, and we lit the candle of hope. So my about the study today will be over hope. Uh, Advent is a time. I, I see Jan and Chuck and Lisa. Thank you guys for, for tuning in on your busy schedule. I appreciate that. I know there's a lot of places you could be, a lot of things you could be doing. You could be doing online shopping for Christmas, and amen, but you choose to be here. And thank you, Cynthia Crowler, for being here as well. I, I uh, As I said before, uh, Adventist season is a time that we we should be internalizing our relationship with God. We should be uh, thinking these uh, next few Sundays before Christmas of our relationship with God and who he is in our lives. Are we authentic? Or are we fake? Are we real with our relationship with God? Or do we just know of God? A lot of people got it confused. A lot of people know of God, but not in a relationship. Knowing of God will not get you eternal life. But in a relationship with God will lead you into eternal life. So a relationship and knowing who he is 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 pivotal for your your life as a believer, that you are in a relationship. And in a relationship with him, it will, you will exhibit certain things in your life and who you are and how you are. Good moral people don't get to heaven. You can be morally right, but spiritually dead. So, so the two... Uh, you can, you got to have the spiritual to get to where we, the destination of Christ. And I'm just saying that, throwing that out there. We're talking about hope, the Advent candle, the first Advent candle that was lit. Sunday, I will go in depth about the true gift of Christ on Sunday worship service. So please tune in to that Sunday. Uh, God, through the Holy Spirit, has given me, I'm excited about Sunday's message. Uh, uh, it's funny, I was in here preaching and uh, Melissa walked in. I was just having a fair church service in here uh, preparing for Sunday worship. There's two scriptures that I want to share with you over hope. Before I get into that, we all saw the news what happened in Michigan, I think. The guy, hey Vicky, uh, uh, the guy uh, went and uh, a 15-year-old who had been bullied uh, went into the school and, and, and killed some students. Hello, Sylvia. That's, uh, we need to pray. You know, uh, things are happening that we never seen or, or expect to happen. Uh, there's so much division and hatred in the world and uh, hope uh, there's a reason why hope is the first candle that's lit through the Advent season. I'll get into that. Uh, so we have hope that things can change. And for those, uh, uh, Sister Jan has uh, cataract surgery tomorrow on her second eye. We're going to lift up a prayer. We're going to lift up those families who lost loved ones in the tragedy that happened on yesterday at the school. Uh, we're going to lift up those who are lost and and broken and disfranchised and just don't know who Christ is and just, you know, being tossed to and fro. We're going to pray for Sylvia Hood. We're going to pray that that the healing comes that needs to become into our lives and, and the change that, that God is going to allow to happen. I want to lift up uh, my wife's uh, Aunt Bessie and that family. That she was the last surviving relative and on Saturday the 11th, we were eulogizing her. Um, I have the honor to do do a eulogy, and, and it's an honor and a privilege to travel to San Antonio to do that. So keep uh, the Hood family lifted up and Waddle family lifted up in prayer as we endure that. Um, also, Yvetta Jenkins, you, you know the young the lady that who lost her two sons to COVID at, uh, at Simpson? Uh, uh, she 
on Thanksgiving Day, she lost, she died. And it wasn't due to COVID, it was due to some other medical issues that she had. But we need to keep her family and Yaquise Jones, which is her brother, uh, and lifted up in prayer. Uh, as we go forward, let us pray. Dear God, we continue to ask you to pray, to bless us. You know the names that I have called out. You know the hurts that people are carrying. You know the division that the world has for us. So, Lord, let us continue to look towards the hills from which all our help, and it comes from you, Lord. Nor the help we know, nor the help that we want. It only comes from you, God. And uh, we, we hope in you, Lord. We hope without uh, hope that we know that you will work things out. We love you, Lord, and thank you for allowing me to be here in the position that I am. And I'm humble enough to know, Lord, it's not me. It's about you, Lord. Less of me and more of you. And, Lord, let, allow my words and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hope. Uh, Ephesians 1 and 18, before I get to uh, uh, Hebrews, it said, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glory, inheritance, and his holy people. I, I was when I was looking at this, the Israelites was hoping that God saved them. It took them full, they hoped for over 400 years. So generation after generation, they prayed and hoped in God to set them free. So the hope of a people. That, that generational hope means that you hope knowing that it's going to happen. We don't hope as if it's not going to happen. You know, like you've been saying, I hope I win the lottery tonight. You know, you're hoping as, you know, that you, you doubt it's going to happen. But when we hope, when our hope is in Christ, it's not in the situation. Our hope is knowing that God is going to work the thing out in his own time and in his own way. Hebrews 10 and 23 says this, we must hold tightly to the hope we say is ours. You see, our hope is found in God, in a relationship with God. Everything that we are is, is, is because of God. So my hope is not in the things I can touch, but my hope is in God, knowing that God is going to be the one to rescue me, is going to fix my situation. My hope is in God. After all, we can trust the one who made that agreement with us. It's a lot of things that, that in this world that we don't agree with. It's a lot of things that people renege on. That's a lot of people who say you love, they love you, and then in the next minute, they don't love you. Uh, Hebrews 10 and 23 through 24, at least, there's a lot of people who say a lot of things. And then it, when it comes down to it, they're not someone that you can uh, trust, uh, you know what I mean, uh, who let you down. But my hope in Christ has never, never wavered, in, and, and he has never let me down. It may take a while, such as the Hebrew people, uh, as the Israelites. It took them 400 years, but he answered their prayers through, through Moses. See, God answers prayers and hopes through different people and through different situations that you never expect. And then what's so crazy about the hope, when God fulfill your, your, your dreams and your hopes, you, uh, you'll be like the Israelites, ungrateful, complaining. Amen? But hope, we should, we should keep our encourage, on encouraging each other to be thankful and to do, to do helpful things. I'm going to read that to you again. Hebrews 10, 23 to 24. We must hold tightly to the hope we say is ours. After all, we can trust the one who made the agreement with us. We should keep on encouraging each other to be thoughtful and to do helpful things. Amen. So God doesn't give us the hope just to be hopeful and selfish. He gives you hope to share that hope with other people. You know, you can say a lot of things, but your actions speaks louder than your words. Hope, hope begats uh, uh, faith. Amen? So the more hope I have in Christ, it m makes my faith stronger in Christ. Remember I said the Israelites, uh, uh, 
hoped in Christ for over 400 years. So 400 years of hope turned to faith. Amen. So when faith becomes action, when, so when hope comes, becomes faith, faith becomes action. James said faith without work is dead and, and faith without works is dead. So, so the two coincide. So the more hope I have in Christ through, through things that I see in this world, I hope for a better world. I hope them that my grandkids do, because I hope not in the situation. I, I hope not in what I read in the news or what I read in the newspaper, what I see on, on television. My hope is in Christ. And when your hope is rooted in God, you know, therefore, he had already made an agreement with us. He said, all things work to the good for those who love me. So my hope is that, uh, that, that God is working things out for my good, even when I don't understand the death and the suffering of things going around, on around us. But I know that, that God is working it out because my hope is in Christ. My hope is not in people. My hope is not in situations. My hope is in Christ. And so as long as your hope is rooted in God, it, it, then it will grow into faith. Amen. Christians can often confuse the word hope for wishing, wishful thinking. You know how we blow out a cake, wish for something, and you blow it out? We, if we hope something will happen, we have no control over it, whether or not it will happen or take place. But the biblical sense of hope, it's very different. Hope in the Bible exists as a secure assurance, a trust place of trustworthiness that for God. God has not failed us in the past, and therefore, if he claims he would do something in the future, we can have a hope that, will, that he will fulfill that claim. Hope waits and endures. It isn't flimsy or merely wishful thinking. It can withstand fire, trials, and despair. So hope never ends because God's reign is going to never end. What's going to end is the reign of this world and the tyranny of this world. But hoping in Christ has no end. It will withstand uh, you walking away from God. It, it, the hope of, of, of bigotry and, and anger and division. God is bigger than that. Hope for peace is bigger than, than what we see that's going on in the world. So my hope will always be rooted in God. Amen. I'm going somewhere with this. Romans 8 and 24 and 25. For in this hope we must, we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all who hopes for what they already have, but if we hope for what we do not yet have, we will wait for it patiently. Amen? How can I make this? We see a lot of things in this world. Okay, like commercials, our kids, my, well, when I was a kid and, and I saw my grandkids, they see a commercial. I hope for that. It's something they can see. It's something they can attain. It's something that you can purchase. Amen? But but this the hope that we're talking about, no man could pur purchase. No one can pay the cost. The hope that, that we're hoping in is invisible. And the hope that we, we, we're hoping in has already been manifested on the cross over 2,000 years. The hope that we're talking about will we will celebrate his birthday on the 25th of December. The hope that that, that we, we, we're talking about has already paid the price for us. The hope that we're hoping in has already been done. But have any one of us seen it? Have any one of us uh, tasted it? Have any one of us touched it? Have any one of us tasted it? No, because I hope it's in things that, that are not seen. The invisible is eternal. The things that we touch uh, 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 is temporary. It will fade and lose its glory. It will fade and rust away. But my hope is in, in the things that are not seen. And I know that God will manifest it because he promised that he loved me enough that he gave his only begotten son. So as I celebrate uh, uh, the first Advent Sunday, as, as I go into the next 
Sunday Advent of Love. I, I, I hope in Christ, I hope that the change will come in the world. I hope change will come in the people where we will not look down on, on people because of who they are or, or, or what they look like, but how if they're treating us right. You know, I, I hope that peace will come one day. I hope that, that love will come one day where the world will be in unity with each other. I hope that, that, that family will be family. I hope that, that, that when, when someone is in need that we can reach and help that need. I hope that, that God one day will shine his face on all of us, and that we will be in a relationship with him, not just knowing of him, but in a relationship with him, because the relationship with him is what's going to change your life forever, In a relationship with him will make you a, a, a better person, because if you're in a relationship with him, you can't sit at the table with God. And the Bible says in, in Revelation, he says, knock and you let him in, he will come and dine with you. If we let him into our heart, it's impossible for us to be the same person that we once were if you're in a relationship with God. But if you just know of God, you, you're all over the place. You, you, you're posting things and you're saying things, but you don't know who God is because you're not in a relationship with him. You're not taking time. You're not spending time. You're not reading. You're not allowing the Holy Spirit to move in your life. And, 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 and the Holy Spirit, Jeremiah says it like this. It's like fire shut up in your bones. Have you ever just been driving down the road and you're hoping and you're thinking and you're, and, and you're shouting in your car and tears are rolling down your eyes because of the goodness of God, and because when you hope in God, you know it's going to happen. You know it's going to happen, and when it happens, you're excited that it happens. I remember being a little boy. I used to hope that my parents would get me this gift that I wanted. And being who I was as a little boy, I, I, I've learned to be mischievous, and I learned how to get me a razor blade. Going in, and my dad is. You know, before they had the th disposable razors, you know, they used to have those razor blades that you had to put in there and your dad would shave the thing. So I would go get one of those razors and I would slice open with the, the, the creases that were the tape where it folded and I could unwrap the gift to see if I had what I hoped for. Amen. And, and then I was slick enough to tape it back where it was. So that no one could see that I, I already looked and see if what I hoped for was there. The key to this now, 400 years, 2,000 years ago, God loved us so much that he gave us this gift that we're celebrating on December the 25th. You don't have to sneak and see if what you hope for is there. The problem we have now is it's there, but people don't want it. Amen. The gift is there for the world, but people don't want it. They want to know of it, but they don't want the relationship that comes with it. Amen. So as I snuck through those presents, and I did find the one that I hoped for, I thought, I thank my parents. Because I didn't know to thank God. I thank my parents. You know, I gave myself away because I was so, Mama, thank you so much. What are you thanking me for? Then I had to lie. Oh, just because you're my mama. Amen. But I thank God today for the hope that keeps on hoping and it keeps on giving, keeps on elevating my faith. Amen, because God is so good. So I hope, my hope is in God. I hope you hope in God. First Thessalonians 1 and 3 says, We remember before, before our God and Father, your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Watch this. Hope, got faith, faith, got love. Amen? So 
So this Christmas, as we check ourselves in the mirror, see where we're at in this Advent season, see where we are in our relationship with God, do we spend time with him? Or do we just know of him? Amen? Because how you treat and how you live, uh, I'm not judging no one, but God told me one time, he says, uh, the fruit of the Spirit tells you what you're supposed to be producing. And so therefore you become a fruit inspector. In a relationship with God, there are things that you exhibit. And those who know of him, there are things that they exhibit. Amen. Being in a relationship, hoping in Christ, never fails, never wavers. Even if I didn't get that gift that I wanted, my hope never wavers in Christ. Because he knows what's best for me. I'm, I, I do. I'm a part-time chaplain. In, uh, at this company. And. Uh, I see people. When they get on hospice care. They. Uh, have months. But I have seen people. Who hope. In Lord. Even when they know. The end is coming. It's so refreshing to me to not to have to preach because my role is different as a chaplain. I'm there to walk alongside and to comfort and to listen. There are sometimes some people who are, are bitter, but there are most of the time people are still hoping in God. People are still encouraged that uh, when I cross over, amen, that's a relationship with God. When a relationship with God, you can celebrate sickness. It's part of life. Adam brought that in through his disobedience. We talked about that before. Sin and death go hand in hand. But eternal life is found in Christ. And to get to eternal life, unfortunately, we got to cross over. So it's been a pleasure walking beside people who take their last breath, who are in a relationship with God. Amen? This is what hope is. A relationship knowing that no matter what, God's going to work it out. Maybe not the way I want him to, but he's going to work it out. Remember, my hope is in Christ, not the situation or people. Get this. Our hope is in God. 400 years. People, generation after generation, hope for one thing. So when God doesn't seem to be listening to you, believe he is listening if you're in a relationship with him. He knows the right time to let that hope that you have in him manifest into something that is tangible. And I hope in him every day. My hope is in him. I love my church we are people that love each other and we definitely love our community and we hope in the Lord. Amen. Until I see you Sunday, remember, there's a mighty word from God on Sunday. Do you have the real gift? Do you have the real gift of Christ? Amen. Let that manifest. Let us pray. There were some prayer requests going out. Uh, the Williams family, LMB family, Hastings, Polk family. Is that in, uh, Vicky, for Vicky, uh, who you have, Vicky? Uh, okay. Anyone else? I'm praying for First Church Elgin, praying for Mr. Jim, who I got to see today, uh, Praying for Central Crowler's family. I'm praying for the Jenkins family. I'm praying for the Jones family. I'm praying for those victims. 
uh, in Michigan. Uh, I'm praying for Darian Townsend, my nephew, praying for his football team that they win the championship. Uh, the UIW will be playing in the playoffs. I'm praying for his family, praying for uh, his safety and well-being. Uh, I'm praying that that he, he completes his uh, scholarship uh, deal where he becomes uh, 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 he's, he's, uh, he's getting his not doctorate but his master's degree. Uh, we're praying for the Townsend family as a whole. Uh, uh, praying for uh, Messiah, my grandson Kendall. Uh, uh, just I'm praying for that we all have hope in God. So let us pray, dear Lord. We thank you. I'm praying for my friend uh, David Sandifer and her husband and her, and their children and grandchildren. And of course, Jan, you already know. And uh, uh, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. Uh, and not of people without hope, but people with hope. And our hope is not in what we see and touch and smell, but our hope is in the invisible. We know that, Lord, that through this Advent season, we need to check our relationship with you. Or do we know you or are we in a relationship with you, Lord? I've been struggling sometimes with that. So, Lord, I'm asking and, and hoping that you have taking that out of my spirit, that I may be who you called me to be. And Lord, I pray for those who, who name been lifted up, that, that, that they may find the peace that surpasses all understanding that comes from being in a relationship with you, Lord. Lord, if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't thank you enough. We love you. Uh, and, and until we see each other on Sunday morning, remember, do you have the real gift of Christ? Holy Spirit felt. Amen. And uh, from, uh, from my church, from my family, uh, the Waddle family, uh, happy holidays. Uh, from my church family, F-U-M-C Elgin, we say happy holidays. We're a church that love each other and we're in relationship with, with our community. Thank you guys for your time. We love you and we see you Sunday. Keep me in your prayers, please. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of deaths and, and a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, funerals. So keep me praying up. Love you.